So I'm uh, David Sampson. I'm from the University of Western Australia. Um, I direct an entity called the Optical and Biomedical Engineering Laboratory. Um, and that's really what I'm here to talk about mostly today. But I also direct the Centre for Microscopy Characterisation and Analysis, uh, which does a whole pile of microscopy and related techniques uh, beyond the field of optics. But uh, in the field of optics, my uh, primary interests are in uh, what I call medical microscopy, and that is uh, doing essentially uh, what people do now in a laboratory under a microscope uh, in the living human body. Um, and I use um, mostly uh, optical coherence tomography to do that, which is a technology that's been developed uh, largely for ophthalmology. Um, and we try to apply that to generally tougher problems uh, with optical tissues or with tissues that, uh, that, um, that don't have such good optical properties that are very highly scattering and very challenging to image through, um, largely in and around uh, detection of cancer. So our interests really are in uh, trying to detect cancer in an intraoperative scenario. So particularly interested in breast cancer, one of our main motivations is the fact that when women have a, a lump removed, a so-called lumpectomy, that one woman in four actually ends up having a second procedure, a second surgical procedure. We think that's a pretty terrible statistic and so a lot of our work is directed towards trying to improve that. Well, I think the real challenge is that essentially techniques at the moment either don't have the resolution that they need to detect very small uh, amounts of cancer, which typically exist, uh, or they don't have the contrast to be able to detect those. So we're competing uh, with optics, with things like uh, radiography, uh, with things like ultrasound. Um, each different uh, imaging technology has its problems. None of them yet actually resolve the issue, but we think optics is, is, is definitely the way to go, and we think that this is a solvable problem. Rather than exploit an optical contrast, we actually exploit a mechanical contrast. So we actually image the stiffness of the tissue. Now, the way we do that is we actually uh, take um, uh, our, our imaging system and we uh, apply a load to the tissue. So we simultaneously image while we're applying some form of stress on the tissue and we image the effect of that. Um, now, as long as we have an optical signal, full stop, um, doesn't matter whether that optical signal is different between cancer and not cancer, um, as long as we can then use that optical signal to generate the mechanical property, then we're able to uh, measure essentially stiffness, uh, which gives us a new form of contrast. And that form of contrast is one which other um, forms of imaging have uh, attempted to exploit and are indeed exploiting. So um, ultrasound elastography is commercially, avail commercially available, it's widely commercially available, and so is magnetic resonance elastography. And they've been um, looking at applications in the liver, liver fibrosis, looking at applications also for um, breast tumour diagnosis. Um, but in our case, we're looking at intraoperative assessment of the tumour. And so we plan to do that either while looking uh, uh, at freshly excised specimens or looking directly inside the tumour cavity and that's the really exciting work that we are not quite there yet in doing but what we've shown is that we've got great mechanical contrast um, for looking at the freshly excised specimens. We now want to translate that to looking directly uh, inside the cavity. This would be a handheld tool in the hands of a surgeon. We've been um, you know, looking at developing this as a handheld probe but at the same time we have a whole companion um, parallel strand of our research which is on building uh, optical devices into hypodermic needles. Now we're not sure that the hypodermic needle uh, has a particular role to play in breast cancer although we have been looking at that as well. Um, we're just not quite sure yet but, but we do think that the needle has many other potential applications and so again we can do stiffness imaging through the needle as well but we've also been looking at just doing three-dimensional optical coherence tomography imaging. We've been looking at combining the needle with fluorescence uh, imaging. We've been looking at doing polarization sensitive imaging through the needle. Essentially, we've got two basic problems in photonics. One is that we can't penetrate with light to sufficient depths. Um, 
in many situations. So that's where the needle technology comes in. The other basic problem we have is we don't always have sufficient contrast uh, when we get there. And so stiffness is one form of contrast, but our group has also been working on looking at birefringence as a source of contrast. As I said, we've been looking at combining OCT with fluorescence. We've also been looking generically at what we call parametric imaging, which is in essence uh, trading off a third dimension in our imaging system to map a particular parameter. And we can map things like attenuation coefficient. As I said, we can map by refringence, stiffness. All of these things essentially are forms of parametric imaging that seek to extend the traditional contrast that we have in the basic optical scattering signature and get us away from relying on just the optical scattering signature, which in some circumstances is great, it always contains information, but often doesn't quite get us as far as we really need to go. Um, I think with the uh, elastography work in breast cancer, um, that's actually getting very close. We're actually seeking commercial funding as we speak, and if somebody wants to write us a large cheque to get on with accelerating this program, I think now is the time to do it. It's a great opportunity. Um, with the needle work, I think we're a little bit uh, further back than that in the sense that there are still more technological challenges, particularly in uh, scanning systems, uh, in improving the speed of scanning systems. But again, the, 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 I guess the early proofs of principle in many different areas we've looked at are very, very promising. And now we just need to take that up to be slightly uh, higher technical level to be able to make that very practical in a surgical scenario. When it comes to the elastography, that's pretty much already the case. We just need to take that last step into the, into the cavity. I think that uh, the impact of optics and photonics in, in cancer still has a long way to play out and it needs focus, focus, focus and focus. And uh, I think that's coming. Um, but if you go to, you know, for example, the equivalent of Photonics West in the world of breast cancer, um, optics technology is a very, very small part of that in the corner somewhere. Um, and so that tells you that it's yet to make a really big mark. But I do think that there are some uh, glaringly obvious areas of um, surgery, for example, that, that w where optical technologies really have an opportunity to play a role. And one of them is just simple removal of cancer. It's just a very... Uh, still a relatively crude um, uh, set of opportunities and instruments available while the surgery is, is being performed. I mean, before the surgery is being performed, the level of imaging and characterization is fantastic. Um, afterwards, again, but actually during the operation, the available technologies don't quite fit the bill and just aren't really resolving the issues. And that's because they can't see tumour uh, in that intraoperative scenario on the scale that's needed. And so that's, that, for many areas of surgery, is crying out for a solution. And I do think that um, optics will provide that solution. Uh, it may be our solution. Um, we think we're pretty excited about what we're doing. But there may be other opportunities. Um, and uh, you know, I, I think we will see who, who, um, who wins out. But I, I will believe it will be an optical technology.